All right, let's talk now about variable D cells. Uh, this is the third type of D cells, and we said that they're caused by cord compression. And, you know, variable D cells are interesting in that, they, you know, they're somewhat easy to pick out just because of their shape. They tend to have a deep V shape. They take a, a sharp shape down and then they come up. A lot of times they have these little shoulders on them, and these shoulders are a good thing. They're reassuring. So we'll say that those shoulders are reassuring, um, and we're going to talk about why they're reassuring uh, in just a little bit, and what ha what it means if they start to go away. Um, so when we're talking about compressing the cord, let's just look at a cross section of an umbilical cord, and remind ourselves about some anatomy before we go digging into the physiology. Okay, the umbilical cord, as we remember, is made up of two arteries and one vein. If you have cut one, you'll know by looking at it, it sort of looks like a smiley face. Um, I'm not much of an artist, but that's a pretty good rendition, actually. Um, and these two arteries are muscular, just like any other arteries, and the vein is easily, easily compressible. So we talk about the two arteries. Um, which direction does blood flow um, in the umbilical arteries? Yeah, it flows from from the fetus. That's important. And so the vein, the vein takes blood to the fetus. And that's important. We talk about cord compression and how this, this shape comes to be. Well, let's try that again. All right. So before we move on, I'll say that the presence of um, variables is reassuring. And we know that it, when the presence is there, we can be reasonably sure that there is uh, no acidemia. Okay, so the presence of variable accelerations is reassuring, especially when they have these shoulders. Okay. So let's talk about, let's look at this curve again with the shoulders and talk about um, what's going on physiologically in the fetus that makes this happen. Okay, so variable D cells. When the umbilical cord is compressed, which of these three vessels do you think gets compressed the first? Right, the the vein because it's less muscular, so the umbilical vein gets compressed, and that leads to a decrease in fetal blood flow. Right, that decrease in fetal blood flow. Then, what do you think it does to the blood pressure? Right, it decreases the blood pressure because we have less volume. And what does a decrease in blood pressure do? We get an increase in heart rate. All right, and that heart rate is what is responsible. That increase in heart rate is what's responsible for these shoulders. So um, contraction starts. Ultimately, the heart rate increases, and that's what we're seeing here. Okay. So let's go back here, and then after the contraction continues, the uterine arteries are compressed. Right, and when the uterine arteries get compressed, the fetal blood pressure goes up. And when the blood pressure goes up, what happens to the heart rate? The heart rate goes down, right? And that is, circle that, that is our D cell, okay? And so that takes us to this sort of the midpoint, the nadir as it's called, of um, our D cell. And I think if you sort of follow the contraction backwards, so the contraction has hit its peak, if you follow it backwards, you'll see what causes this, um, this D cell to go away um, and go back to baseline here. So what happens then if these variables happen all the time. They happen frequently. There's lots of cord compression going on. And 
they happen enough to where we start to get a change in the fetal acid base status. We start to get a little bit of acidemia. So what happens is we start to see a change in our D cell. Our variable D cell um, you know, normally has this shoulder, goes down. What happens is our point, that nice point we normally see on variables, flattens out. And so we get something like this. If the hypoxia continues, we get the same curve still with the shoulders, but the beat-to-beat -beat variability on the bottom flattens out. Okay. And then after that, if we keep continuing with our hypoxia, we get something like this. All right. So the important parts of each of these, this is normal, so this is good. This is what we want. We'll give that an A+. Plus. We develop this change, but there's beat-to-beat -beat variability at the bottom of this change. And we get a flattening here with no beat-to-beat -beat variability. And then ultimately we lose those shoulders, right? So no shoulders. And this means um, this is all called progressive hypoxia. with cord compression. Okay, so that's important stuff to remember. Let's talk about um, a couple of other different patterns. Um, you know, we won't dig a whole lot further into the into the physiology of the progressive hypoxia of cord compression, um, but it is important to know so that you can look at a rhythm strip. And this is one of the main things we're talking about with that last C of our of our scaffold, right? Um, we want to know if there are changes over time. So we want to notice if our variable D cells are changing over time um, and if we should take action uh, to eliminate some distress to the baby. Okay, so let's look at a couple other